baby booger. So you love your Christmas tree, don't you? And this one doesn't understand why he's not allowed to go into the Christmas tree. See, what's a beef? Why does she get to go and I have to stay over here? See, I want to go in the tree. See, but yesterday when I got into the tree, I got in trouble. But not this one. Good morning. Happy Saturday. Today is the day we are baking the cookies. My husband and my sons have been waiting for this day because they love the cookies. But first, before we start all that madness, we gotta do breakfast. And by the way, is anyone else out there treating vanilla like it's made of 24 karat gold? This bottle of vanilla, <laughs> my dog's got a squeaker. I bought this bottle of vanilla from Costco probably about two years ago, if I got like that much left. This bottle cost me I kid you not, like $8.99. This exact same bottle of vanilla at Costco today is $35. I mean, it's like, holy cow, that's, that's a big increase. Cooper! He loves that squeaker. It drives us crazy, but it brings him so much joy. <laughs> So I was only going to eat one pancake. I only made a few. I made four for each of the guys and one for me. So what does Casey do? He only eats three of his four pancakes. What am I doing? Yeah. I'm eating a second pancake. One of the things I'm doing right now before I run to the market is I'm going through my cookbooks and I'm checking for all the ingredients I need and writing my ingredients list. Usually, oh, the window. I always have to remember that the window is usually the darkest about. Usually this is the kind of stuff I would do in November and even October. I would make sure I had all the ingredients for everything I would need for come December for baking and for entertaining and guests. This no, October and November were pretty insane. Uh, in October, we went up north in Michigan for a while. Um, and even though it was only a few days trip, it's funny, when you're going to northern Michigan in late October for like a color trip, you have to do a lot of packing because you, you don't know what the weather is going to be. So that took up a big chunk of October. And then in November, we had the Universal Studios trip and I spent ugh, like a week packing and planning and trying to get everything down into these little carry-on suitcases. So that ate up a big part of November. And then when we got back from um, Orlando, my husband went to Mexico, Mexico for a week for work. I mean, it was literally, we like back to back trips and things going on. So it was really busy, it was really crazy and chaotic. And then Casey had uh, cello concerts in there and there was karate in there. Uh, we were sick for a little while in there. So it is now December, I think it's December 7th or 8th, today. I think it's the 8th. So it's yeah. December 8th and I'm going through my list of ingredients for all the cookies I would need and I'm pretty much buying all the ingredients at the market today and I have coupons for like none of it. I mean, seriously, it was like, oy vey. Whereas I know in November, all of these things were on sale. Just before Thanksgiving, they put all of this on sale. I wasn't here for Thanksgiving. We celebrated Thanksgiving after we got back. So I really feel like I'm, you know, just way behind on these things even though I'm not. I mean, it's December 8th. I don't know why I'm feeling anxiety over cookies, but yet I am feeling some crazy anxiety. So I'm gonna calm down, because <laughs> honestly, it's not that big of a deal. It really isn't. You know, it's weird how your head knows it's not that big of a deal, and yet your chest like seizes up. Just anxiety's, anxiety's crazy. It makes no sense. It's... So I am in Meyer. And this place looks like it's been 
ransacked. Like everything I need to buy is gone or like the reasonably priced versions are gone and the only thing left are the insanely expensive ones. It's like, Jesus Christ. So yeah, the Christmas cookies that I was already not prepared for just got a hell of a lot more expensive. Ooh, my nose is rosy. <laughs> it's cold out there. So as shopping trips go, that one was a total cluster bleep. I, for the longest time, I couldn't find any of the items that I actually went to the market to buy. I did find lots of items that were on really great sales. And so I took that moment to stock up and you'll know, save $5 when you buy five. So I bought five of these and five of those. But what ended up happening was I didn't bring any of the boys with me to help me through the market today. So I was on my own, the basket's getting heavier and heavier. I couldn't find my baking items. And I wasn't the only one. I literally just saw a woman in the mire drop an F-bomb over bags of flour because none of them have prices on them. And she was about to lose it. So yeah, <laughs> supermarkets, your loyal customers know where things are located in your stores. And if something is in one location for 11 months out of the year, please don't relocate it during the holiday season and we can't find it. Holidays are already stressful enough. When you hide our ingredients and make us walk all over your damn store for an extra 20, 30 minutes trying to find things, you're not helping us. You're actually driving your customers insane you know the shelf where it should be completely bare not not a single product to be found but then you walk over to the meat department and there's chocolate chips why are chocolate chips in the meat aisle somebody fill me in please let me know why chocolate chips were by the meats i i have no i got nothing i got nothing so yeah it was crazy absolutely crazy and I'm going to go home now. I'm, I'm pretty convinced that like hell is an eternity wandering around lost in a supermarket. I, I, I think that might be it. I, I could be wrong. I, I'm, I'm probably surely I'm wrong. I, I'm sure a burning like a fire is worse than endless eternity in a supermarket. But yeah, Meyer, you're, it's too big. I just one of the reasons I don't usually shop there. The store is too big to begin with. And then they relocate things. You can't find it. The shelves are empty. Very frustrating. Very, very frustrating. I'm already exhausted. And now I got to go home and bake the cookies. Because making these cookies is time consuming, I like to make two batches at once. So right now I'm going to go through and get all of my sugars and butters and eggs in here. And one at a time whip the liquid mixture. And then when it's time for the dry ingredients, I will add the dry ingredients to one bowl, mix it with the KitchenAid, pop that one out, add the dry ingredients to the second bowl, mix it up with the mixed KitchenAid and have that one ready to go. So this way, instead of having to make two batches, one at a time from scratch, I whip out two of these bad boys at once and actually saves a lot of time. So that's what I'm gonna start doing right now. All right, so right now what I have in each bowl is I have two full sticks of butter, a cup of butter, three-fourths of brown sugar, three-fourths a cup of regular sugar, two teaspoons of vanilla, and two eggs each. And then what really makes this recipe, believe it or not, the juice. Just about like a little less than half a teaspoon of the cherry juice. It doesn't take a lot. You add that to each batter of liquids, your sugar mix, and then we can get to beating. In this bowl right now, I have three cups of flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, and a teaspoon of salt, because that's what causes your chemical reactions. So I'm gonna mix those very gently into this mixer and try to keep the uh, fly out to a minimum. For the record, I have a really hard time getting the fly out to stay to a minimum. I usually trash the kitchen at this point. And Casey is dying to get into the video. He has been my cherry chopper because I hate chopping the cherries. And now, show everyone your fingers. He's rosy. That's why I hate chopping the cherries. Here, I just want to... Thank you. Cherries in. 
then cut the second bag open. Scissors right there. <laughs> we should have done this before we started. All right. Part of the fun of helping mom bake the cookies is getting to lick the spatulas. <laughs> uh oh, t uh, somebody wants a little. T uh, hey, brother. Hey, brother. Cooper cookie dough. T is it Cooper cookie dough? No. T what? You're not going to share? <laughs> There's chocolate in it. Not in every bite. One of my biggest peas baking, cooking, anything is working in a mess. So before I even start scooping cookie in, uh, cookies onto sheets, I gotta tidy up the kitchen because I can't work like this. I, it's too messy, too messy, too much. Gotta fix it. So to fit these in my oven so I can cook two batches at one time, I do one, um, uh, oh, metal Nordic Ware cookie sheet with a sill pat and then I do one uh, Pampered Chef stone baking dish because I can't do two of these or just it's a little too fat to fit in the oven but I can fit this combo so I can get 12 cookies here and 12 here and this I got from Pampered Chef about 20 some years ago my friend Ann used to be a Pampered Chef seller I haven't seen her in forever it makes the perfect scoop so you just come in here and you set down 12 of these and it goes pretty fast with a scooper instead of trying to do it with two tablespoons or two teaspoons like we used to do it back in the day before I had one of these little doodads. Yeah, doodads. If you're doing a lot of baking, doodads make life a little bit easier. And then once I have all 24 of these up, laid out on the sheets, uh, they're going to go in the oven the first batch is always tricky. It goes in at 375 degrees, but initially you're gonna wanna watch them. I usually cook the first batch for about 11 minutes, and then I check on it and decide whether it needs one or two more minutes. And then also to base on your elevation, that can affect how long you have to bake these too, because I know, um, I don't understand why, but I do know higher elevations require longer baking times or a different temperature. So you might have to play around with your first batch. But then once you make the first batch, your time is set and you are good to go for every batch after that. Huh? You wanna do it? Sure, go right ahead. Nice. You scoop it, break it along the side, and then squeeze it to get it to drop. Mm -hmm. I need three more rows of three. Oh, oh, oh. You gotta have a space between them so they can oh. spread out. I guess I'll eat that cherry. Mm. pretty bummed out because the one tray came out a little bit burnt and this one came out looking pretty good but then the ones over there are a little raw I'm I only make these in December and I'm suddenly remembering I don't think I do cook two sheets in the oven at once I think I cook one pan at a time so we usually have one pan in the oven one pan on the deck cooling and then we're scooping a pan and that's my assembly line so right now I have one pan in, I've got it in for nine minutes. I'll check it again. Um, you know, I kind of do this every year. <laughs> every year the first batch seems to get either a little underdone or a little overdone. So we have definitely have one pan of overdone. So we have one pan in the oven at a time so that the heat can move more freely. And we, I will show you the next batch, which hopefully will look a little better. I have made several more batches of cookies in the oven from that same mix that I made. 
And honestly, guys, those are the saddest, most pitiful looking cookies I have ever made in my life. Something is wrong with the ingredients, whether it, I don't know, the only ingredient, I mean, salt is salt. Salt doesn't go bad. It's a preservative, for goodness sake. The flour is new flour. The sugar is new sugar. The brown sugar was a brand new bag of sugar just purchased today. It's got to be the baking soda. I mean, that's the only thing it can be. So I will be going to the supermarket. I will be buying a new box of baking soda and I will be making those cookies again. I'm so frustrated though because honestly, between the cherries, the Ghirardelli chocolate chips, the, the sticks of butter, I mean, to make those cookies, it's like $20 to make all those cookies. And they're just sad, sad, sad looking cookies. So I'm, and then I was supposed to make the peanut butter cookies today, the peanut butter Hershey Kiss ones, only I was gonna swap in Reese cups instead. I'm not even gonna make those because that recipe calls for baking soda. That one calls for baking soda and baking powder. So, and with those cookies, you need them to puff because then you take the chocolate and smush the center down and it's that risen outside edge that holds it together. So I'm not even making the peanut butter cookies, which bummed Casey out because he really wanted all the cookies because you know he's 11 and 11 year olds want all the cookies. So I'm going to clean my kitchen, put away the mess, finish baking the last bit of dough here and call it a day. Um, I am just so bummed. I just, yeah, even even Bill and Casey are just looking at these cookies going, what did you do different? I go, I, I, I did nothing different. I mean, I've been making these cookies since I was about 23 years old. I'm 47, trust me. I know how to make these cookies. I admit, the first batch, you always gotta play with the time for a few, a minute or two, but really, people, I know how to make these cookies. Something was wrong. I am ending this video the way I seem to end several of my videos in the past. Me on the sofa with a foot with an ice pack on it. I kind of knew this one was going to come though because whenever I spend the day on my feet, this is what eventually follows. AJ's home. Also, for those of you who are wondering where he was in today's video, AJ works. He has a job. He's a working man. He works for McDonald's. So we figured it was a good job for him to have his senior year. Ooh, ooh. The dog just stepped on his foot. <laughs> and he's trying really, really hard not to curse because he knows he gets in big trouble when he curses on my channel. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, anyway, yeah, we figured McDonald's was a good job for him to have senior year. They're really flexible. They work around his school schedule and his schedule to see his dad. Well, yeah, actually, we're starting to run into some scheduling conflicts. But yeah, so I am finishing my video on the sofa with an ice pack on the foot. Casey said, Mom, are you even going to post today's video? And I said, you know what? I am. I admit those cookies came out looking sad and pathetic. But I always try to keep this channel as real as possible. And you know what? Let's be real. I made some really crappy looking cookies today. They taste fine. They ta Yeah, even built, they, they taste like they're supposed to taste. For whatever reason, though, instead of being puffy and golden, they just went... They look like someone just deflated them. <laughs> What's the vote? Yay mm -hmm. or nay? Good. You know, they taste fine. They just look horrible. I will be making more. I'm going to get better ingredients. I, it's, I, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so um, right now I'm going to sit here and edit my video. I recorded a bunch of footage when we went to northern Michigan in October. And I never turn that video into a vlog. I think I mentioned earlier in this video, October, November was busy, crazy, hectic. AJ's birthday's in there, Bill's birthday's in there. There was traveling, multiple travels, um, things went on for school. And then I had a stretch of time where I just, I wasn't feeling well. Um, I, I can't control that. In fact, one of the reasons the footage went up so late from going to Universal Studios was because well, by the time we got back from Universal, I was not in a good way. It took me like almost a week to recover from that. 
And those of you who asked where was AJ at Universal Studios, he did not go. He decided to spend Thanksgiving week with his biological father instead of going to Universal Studios. He's gone twice before, once with Bill, me, and Casey, and then once with his dad, his other dad. And um, he just doesn't like it. He gets really bad motion sickness. He doesn't enjoy the rides. And he was just like, I don't wanna go. He, he didn't wanna go a third time. So it's like, okay, not a problem. I'm not gonna force you to go somewhere, spend thousands of dollars just to watch you mope and be miserable. So he went to Charles's and we went to Universal. Anyway, I'm gonna say goodbye and I will talk to you later. Sneaking cookies, I saw that. <laughs> talk to you later. Casey, turn off the TV or turn the volume off. Hi guys, it is a week later um, and I am baking the Christmas cookies. I didn't even want to post that vlog because I was so self-conscious of that that those stupid cookies didn't rise. I was like, okay, I have to make new cookies and when I produce ones that actually look the way they're supposed to look, I will finish this vlog. So that is what I'm doing. Right now, Casey and AJ are gone to school. Bill is at work. I'm home alone, watching Home Alone. Seemed highly appropriate. And I am baking cookies, lots and lots of cookies. And can I just say, it's actually a lot easier to bake these cookies when you're home alone because there's not all these little fingers grabbing them and eating them as fast as you can get them off the baking sheet. So yeah, I'm actually making a ton of cookies and they'll actually make it till Christmas and nobody even knows I'm baking these, so I'm actually going to hide them so that they make it to the holiday. So I'm gonna turn the camera around though right now and show you regular chocolate chip cookies. Um, although I have the first batch of chocolate chip cherry cookies here. Actually, it's not the first batch. Uh, the first batch is currently cooling in the refrigerator, and this is what they were supposed to do. They were supposed to puff up and rise, although they're still a little hot. Put that back in there. And I already have the second batch in the oven heating up. Please excuse the glass, it's a hot mess. I, it's, it's dirty in between the two glasses. My oven is actually quite clean. The outside glass is clean, the inside glass is clean. I, what I, the door actually needs to be taken apart to get the filth trapped between the glasses where I can't clean that. And somehow that's just never really high priority. But I will show you the cookies once they're cooled and on that tray. And there you have it. Perfect chocolate chip cherry cookies that are baked all the way through and nice and thick and yummy. And we're gonna add these over and then with the raw dough onto this baking sheet. And I have the next sheet already out of the oven and they are perfect. Honestly, the only thing I did different between this batch and the last one is I changed baking soda. Uh, last time I used the can of the like lidded clabber girl baking soda. This time I used good old fashioned Arm and Hammer baking soda, and my cookies turned out the way they were supposed to. Every batch has, so I will never stray from Arm and Hammer ever again. I will always use Arm and Hammer. So I am going to wrap up this vlog, and I hope you enjoyed the ups and the downs and me being crazy and neurotic. And I hope you are having a wonderful holiday season. I hope I didn't just turn myself black because of the window behind me. But honestly, thanks for sticking around and I'll talk to you later.